Solo A Star Wars Story, perhaps the least watched out of all the Star Wars movies. Whenever I ask someone whether they've seen all the Star Wars movies or not, they'd answer yes, but when I ask them even Solo, most of the time they'd say no, and there's a good reason for this. The Last Jedi was like a genocide in which Star Wars pretty much purged the population of the Star Wars fanbase after the release of The Last Jedi. Given how disrespectful Disney has been to the fans, many decided to leave. Disney tried to pass off the stupid narrative that it was Star Wars fatigue, whatever that means. So I saw this film for my birthday as it was May, which was the month I was born, and I thought it was okay, I guess. But the film has decreased in quality in my eyes since my original viewing. I think less of it now. So let's discuss it. Same thing you'd expect from every other Disney Star Wars story. Underwhelming, undercooked on the outside, raw on the inside. This film's bad aspect can be specifically described as dumb. This is a movie that of course didn't need to happen. At least Rogue One had a purpose in which it wanted to expand the universe and fill the gap between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Solo, on the other hand, just does nothing for the franchise. This is not the type of story that should have became a movie. Why couldn't it be a fucking book? Speaking of books, this movie just copies and pastes elements from the old timeline. Why did they reboot the canon if they're just going to repeat it all over again? Canon should be a brand new thing. Maybe if the new canon was designed to be a hybrid of the old one instead of a blatant case of plagiarism, maybe it would get away with it. If you're going to repeat something, then at least give it the same fucking name. Solo is quite similar to the books about Han Solo. While not everything is the same, you can easily tell his legend's counterpart is a template. Let me give some examples. Han becoming an Imperial pilot is stolen from legends. Quira easily resembles Han's other love interests before Leia in Legends. Han saves Chewie's life which earns him a life debt, and Tobias Beckett is just a cop out of Garrus Shrike, who was Han's mentor in Legends. Seriously? I was interested on how Han would be presented compared to his Legends counterpart, but copying Legends was a huge concern. A concern well placed since it did just that. So most of the Disney era Star Wars movies and stories, in general, just copy, steal, or plagiarize old shit. We've all seen this before. Couldn't they have come up with something new? This movie is just a plagiarized cash grab. Now apparently it was George Lucas himself who had the idea for this movie. He supposedly got Lawrence Kasdan to start writing a Han Solo movie before he sold Star Wars to Disney. But I'm calling bullshit for two main reasons. One, they disregarded his sequel trilogy, so why would they go through with his Han Solo idea? And two, Disney are compulsive liars and use George often as a marketing ploy. I suspect that this is more of a lie Disney made up, so fans would either accept it, or the outrage for this idea would go to George and Disney could just say, George wanted this movie to happen. But even if this was George's idea, it's still a cash grab because they copied other stories and pasted it as a new product. If this Han Solo movie had to happen, why the fuck was it done in this way? So basically this is the Han Solo origin story nobody in the right mind would be interested in. This is perhaps the least interesting idea for a Star Wars movie. A movie has to make you want to see it in the trailers and stuff. And since this movie just looks uninteresting, that's just a big problem. To summarize this movie, it's basically a 20 minute prologue of explaining where Han came from and then the rest of the movie is Han doing everything else mentioned in the original trilogy in the span of a weekend. Yeah, the sense of time feels like this all happens between two to three days. Now to be fair, Revenge of the Sith had a lot of important shit happen in a week that you'd originally think would happen over time, but Revenge of the Sith handles it far better because the writing is top notch. Solo feels like a one-time roller coaster ride that is absurd. It's very unbelievable. How could he have done all this shit in a weekend? Fucking hell. So with that out of the way, let's have a look at the actual plot. Well, the opening is an improvement over Rogue One, I guess, since it has some sort of opening text, but still, it should still have it the Star Wars way. Han and Quira escape from this weird 
alien to try and get off world, but Quirra is caught and Han has to do it solo. We get this ridiculous, unnecessary explanation for Han's surname, as some random Imperial officer gives him his iconic name after some weird ass dialogue. Who are your people? I don't have people. I'm alone. So basically, Han's motivation for becoming an Imperial is over his fucking girlfriend. But one thing I don't get is how is becoming an Imperial pilot gonna get your fucking girlfriend back? This is literally the most cop-out explanation for them to try and be somewhat different from Legends. Do you think changing his motivation makes your unoriginal idea original? So cut to like three years later. Han has been kicked out of Pilot Academy for having a mind of his own, which confuses me because isn't independence supposed to be a good thing? Wasn't there a Star Wars Rebels episode where they literally discouraged teamwork? I mean, this is around the time they stopped keeping track of their own lore. So Han overhears a bunch of smugglers talking and he wants a piece of the action, but their leader, Tobias Beckett, just gets them thrown into a pit with fucking hell, Chewbacca? Really? Is this how they punish deserters in the Empire? By feeding them to a fucking Wookiee? And another thing, isn't it a bit strange that Han can communicate with Chewie instantly? Now this is just an assumption, but I always thought Han and Chewie learnt to communicate over time. I mean, that makes far more sense than this. So Han and Chewie manage to escape, and the smugglers from earlier change their minds and pick the two up. Then we've got this really suggestive scene of Han and Chewie in a shower. Now that is just cringe 101. It's a dumb scene that should have been cut out. So basically, after some talk about the heist they're about to pull off, they try to rob an Imperial train on some planet I have no interest in. Of course it all goes to shit, and pretty much everyone dies except for Han, Chewie, and Toby. And also a group of rebels hinder the robbery. I'll get to them later. Toby reveals that he was hired by Dryden Voss, a higher ranked crime boss in the Crimson Dawn Mafia or whatever the hell. Toby says that he'll have to convince Dryden Voss to give him another chance, otherwise his head will be off. So they go to Dryden Voss's yacht, and Jesus fuck, Han just happens to come across Queerer again. The chances of Han ever meeting Queerer again is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Well, actually much higher. I can forgive contrivances like this if the rest of the story is well written, just like Wolfenstein the New Order, but this story has countless things that make no sense. So Han suggests going to Kessel for the supply they were going to steal. Dryden Voss accepts and tells Han and crew that he can bring his girlfriend with him. So then we get another character introduction. Lando Calrissian. I guess Lando is okay. In this movie, the thing that breaks the character for me is that he doesn't really feel like Lando. So let's talk about the black sheep. They fucking changed his sexuality from hetero to pansexual. This retcon does absolutely nothing for the story or the universe as a whole. So what the hell was the point? Later in the movie, we meet his droid that they heavily imply that he likes on a sexual level. This is really uncomfortable to listen to. How he wants to bang his personal robot. The thing that this movie does wrong is change characters into some weird version of themselves. Lando is supposed to be a ladies man like seen in Empire Strikes Back. This pansexual retcon does absolutely nothing. Now keep in mind, I spoke to an actual pansexual guy, and he doesn't like it either for the same reason. It breaks his character. And since this pansexual retcon is never referenced in The Rise of Skywalker, a movie where the original actor returns, it seems like this is just some stupid fan fiction. And I should also talk about the lesbian kiss in The Rise of Skywalker since I'd rather talk about it now. When I say I didn't like the lesbian kiss, it's not because I think homosexuals don't deserve rights. It's quite the opposite. Disney are just making false representations to make themselves look good. Something like this would have never made it through the Chinese government. If Disney was truly pro-gay rights, they would forgo the Chinese bucks entirely and only show this LGBT representation in countries that allow it. Disney doesn't give a shit about gay rights. It's all about money and all they're trying to do is make themselves look righteous and politically correct. It's just scummy. 
They put a black guy in The Force Awakens, but they'll have no problem with sidelining him in the Chinese posters for the movie. It's ironic that Disney called people racist misogynists for not liking diversity, when really they are the racist misogynists, given how they never gave two shits about anything they try to look like. They're not LGBT supporters or race rights supporters, they just use both movements to make themselves look good. So they have a game of Sabak. Han loses because Lando cheats, but Lando agrees to help with the heist for the cut of the money. At this point, I'd rather play Grand Theft Auto 5 than continue watching this movie, because the heists in that game are far more interesting and exciting, and you also get to personally spend the money you earn from the heist. Here, I couldn't give a shit about these characters' ambitions, even the ones from the original trilogy. So with the crew assembled, we see the Millennium Falcon in its earlier stages. The earliest we saw the Falcon was Revenge of the Sith, which on a side note, goes to show how much research Red Letter Media did, when one of the few things that they quote unquote liked about the film was no Millennium Falcon even though it was in the movie as an easter egg. So anyways, they go to Kessel, incite a slave revolt like it's a violent revolution, they steal the supply, and the sequence just serves to destroy Lando's droid in the most emotionally hollow way. This droid has zero cool lines or anything to make me give a shit. This just serves to explain the Falcon's navigational computer and Empire Strikes Back and stuff. Something that I never remotely gave a shit about. So Han Solo does the Kessel Run, because of course he does. This is a crazy weekend, and essentially Han and crew land on a planet called Savarine, which just like everything else, I fail to remember the name of because the place was just so boring. I remember Han and Lando around this time talking to each other, and they interact nothing like they do in the original trilogy. The rebels from earlier show up, Han bluffs that he has like 20 hired guns on the ship, but Lando just ditches them. Fucking asshole! The leader of the Rebels reveals that they want to strike at the Empire and crime syndicates, a cause I don't care about, this plot point is undercooked like a motherfucker. But then we've got the underwhelming climax, where the film can't decide who's on what side. Making it really confusing because Toby turns on Han to Voss, but then he betrays Voss, and then Quira betrays Voss as well, and it's just all over the place. Don't get me wrong, The Last Jedi is worse, but but this movie doesn't do much to follow up on the disaster that was The Last Jedi. Describing the sequence is really hard, because the plot is jumbled and all over the place. When writing this script, I completely forgot the rebels in this movie were in the movie until I got up to the part where they confront Han and crew on Savarine, and I remembered to mention them in their first appearance. So Dryden Voss dies, Han and Quira separate predictably to where Han goes up and kills Toby, and if things couldn't get even more confusing, Quira, in a Ryan Johnson case of subverting expectations, contacts Darth Maul. No really, Darth Maul. Alex from Star Wars Explained tried passing off this bullshit throughout his videos that Disney are trying to be really careful when it comes to not alienating Star Wars fans. A notion disproven by the mountains of plot holes in the sequels that are explained in books. But the Darth Maul thing is the ultimate example that Disney does not give one fuck if the audience is confused. Here's a likely representation of what they were thinking. They either assumed everybody watched The Clone Wars, or they expected the casual fan to look up why Darth Maul was in Solo to encourage them to start watching The Clone Wars. The cameo is never explained because within the context of just the films, the extremely casual fan will be very, very confused and go, Wait, I thought he died in Phantom Menace. If this cameo was explained at all, which is kind of necessary for this to get a free pass, then it would be fine. But the fact that they just pulled this crap out of nowhere and expected everyone to watch The Clone Wars on Disney Plus or wherever is just lazy filmmaking. So the film ends with Han and Chewie locating Lando and if Hans wins the Falcon for both of them. And that's to the end of the movie. Seriously? This was just an underwhelming crappy spin-off that couldn't justify its own existence. It was made from the minds of creatively illiterate writers at Disney or Lucasfilm. Whoever is calling the shots. And the reason why these characters feel off? Well, believe it or not, they planned a fucking trilogy out of this film. What? I'm sorry. Why? 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 I mean, zero movies was enough. Do we really need three? 
Why do I get the feeling that even the cancelled Ryan Johnson trilogy would have a far more interesting idea? Who the hell wants to see three movies? That would just be a waste of time, money and resources. Better spent on other ideas. And given this film's utter failure at the box office, thank god there's no sequels coming from this. But still, they shouldn't have made any movies based on Han Solo. Just make a fucking book and it'll sell. Or hell, just re-release the Han Solo novels from Legends. That would have been a smart and safe approach if they really wanted a Han Solo story. So I'm going to give three points to this segment. I can't see a fucking thing. This movie has the worst lighting in the series. It's fucking darker than Blade Runner, a film that ironically starred Harrison Ford. I can barely see the characters, let alone the background. The lighting department must have been really scaled back. It's not even undersaturated film. It has no saturation. It's just dark, 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 dark. A person who isn't wearing glasses when they need it, or the visually impaired, will probably have a tough time, and have no idea what's going on. I can't see the shots, and so I can't judge them. It's a rare occasion that I can't even describe it. As for the editing, just like The Force Awakens, this film is paced too fucking fast. As I said before, Han does everything outside of the prologue in a weekend. This is an even shorter adventure than The Force Awakens, yet it zips along just as fast. So since I can't judge much of this segment, mostly due to the writing, I'm going to give one point to this segment. Since the lighting is so dark, my ability to judge everything will be hindered because the problem is, I can't see the fucking effects. It's too fucking dark. From what I could see, I guess they're the same quality as Rogue One, except there's no CGI Tarkin or Leia or anything like that. When it comes to visual design, a lot of the things I could see are just fucking off. I mean, this is what I've come to expect. Disney doesn't understand Star Wars at all, and thus it can't make anything look like it belongs in Star Wars. That big thing at the start is the same as the aliens in The Last Jedi. Putrid, rotten, foul, and absolutely disgusting. The thing was a more appealing creature to look at. And the sets? Can't see them. It's too dark. I'm going to give zero points to this segment, which maybe that's not very accurate if I could see, but because I can't see, I have to give it such a bad score. Alden Ehrenreich plays Han Solo. Sorry bud, you did your best, but it wasn't enough. Alden does his best to do a Harrison Ford impression, but the thing is, he doesn't look or sound like Harrison Ford. In fact, he'd barely make it as a stunt double in the distance away from the camera. Alden's performance is literally trying to be Harrison Ford, but the thing is his voice and looks don't convince me he is the real Han Solo. It seems the late River Phoenix still holds the spot of being the best Harrison Ford impressionist. Woody Harrison plays Tobias Beckett. Woody's voice sounds right for a western movie about cowboys and stuff, but seeing him in a science fiction movie like Star Wars is just off. He just doesn't belong, and since I was never interested in his character, being that he is a cheap cop out of Garrosh Shrike, I am bored by his performance. Hell, when he was asked if his character was Garrosh Shrike, Harrelson said yes, and I guess he wasn't lying either. Amelia Clark plays Queera. Look, I didn't watch Game of Thrones, it doesn't interest me. And Amelia's performance is just bleh. It's not bad, it's just underwhelming. It's sort of like Woody Harrelson. It just doesn't feel like that Clark's heart was into this movie. She barely has a screen presence, and she was the least interesting of Han's crew. Donald Glover plays Lando Calrissian. Okay, now I can finally talk about someone I liked. When it comes to recasting Lando since Billy T. Williams is too fucking old, I now can't imagine anyone else to replace Williams than Childish Gambino himself. Despite playing a stupid version of Lando with a change in personality and sexuality, both being completely unnecessary, Glover still reminds me of the old Lando we knew and loved. Had Lando been written a little more faithfully, I would have praised Lando to the stars in every way. Paul Bettany plays Dryden Voss. He's just a generic British bad guy. Now I should also mention Finnish actor Juna Suatamo as Chewbacca. Since he's really just a guy in a costume, I can't really judge him, but he deserves a mention. And when it comes to Darth Maul, 
He's played by the same body actor, but this time voiced by Sam Witwer, who I best know as playing Starkiller in The Force Unleashed. I loved Maul's voice in The Clone Wars and I loved it here. Not bad from a cameo from an acting perspective, but the writing is what makes it fall fucking flat. I'm going to give 5.5 points to the acting with its saving grace being Donald Glover. I can't remember a single track from this movie. It's just bland shit. Two points for the music. Well, I'm sorry for not going into much detail as I could, but the bad lighting really hindered my judgement of this movie, since I couldn't really see anything. This movie looks like it was filmed in a mining tunnel. I could see better if I went mining with a pickaxe in Minecraft. It's just unwatchable. I can only listen, but even the dialogue's forgettable. Except for the exchange between Han and that Imperial officer, and also when Lando said that every story about him was true. Just like the Ryan Johnson trilogy, the Han Solo trilogy is never happening. I can see why some might enjoy this movie. It can be enjoyed as an inoffensive space western, but the problems of this movie was too much to bear for me. Solo A Star Wars Story has earned a total of 11.5 points out of 50, equaling a 2.3 out of 10 score. Why did this film have to be made? Now before I close this video, I should mention future plans. After I'm done with The Rise of Skywalker, I will probably move on to The Mandalorian or the 2008 Clone Wars movie, because why not? I will probably put my main emphasis on the KOTOR 2 critique, and probably move on to The Force Unleashed after that, plus a spin-off video with Republic Commando. If you have a suggestion for a video, don't feel shy, leave it in the comments. Also, the Q&A is still happening, so go ahead and ask your questions. Thanks for watching, and until next time, what are stories about mystery boxes?